Hi, I'm Randall Schwartz. I host a podcast called Floss Weekly. How many people subscribe to Floss Weekly? How many people listen? A few. Okay, that's nice. How many people here have heard of the programming language called Perl? There we go. How many people have bought my books about Perl? Many of them. Yes, I know. That's great. We established the interactive web in the late 90s, so I'm very happy that I have that legacy. And then also the Floss Weekly legacy, where I am now talking to 50,000 people every week about open source software. So that's awesome. I also now have a new legacy. I guess you can't call it a legacy until it's actually sort of been some history. But I am full in to Dart and Flutter. Last year, I made a presentation on Dart here. I was just talking mostly about how Dart was revolutionizing the uh, web space. But today, I'm going to be talking about how Dart and Flutter, and of course, Google behind that, are revolutionizing just completely the uh, mobile space. So I had always wanted to be in the mobile space, but I didn't want to learn Objective-C for iOS. And I didn't want to learn their frameworks. I didn't want to have to then learn also the Java frameworks for Android. I didn't want to have to learn both of those. I don't have to do that now because Flutter takes care of the whole thing. Let me talk about that for the next hour. Okay. Whoops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did that go away? Why did that go away? No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's supposed to play. It's supposed to play. Here we go. Okay. So here's the deal. So let's first talk about the fact that some of us are old enough, including me, to remember ancient operating systems that were pro provided by the vendor and they were closed source with a few exceptions. In other words, you bought a Digital Equipment Corporation machine, and on it came the operating system, and that was it. Okay. But then the Floss revolution came along, free, libre, open source software. BSDs, Linux, and others, right? Including my friend Linus Torvalds, who now lives in Portland, fellow Portlander, which was fun. Customers could then fix, and extend, and modify the operating system or port it to new hardware. And they could share their code freely with others. But most importantly, the thing about Linux is it really made everything equal. You could write your code once and run it on extremely varied hardware, from single board microcomputer devices all the way up to supercomputers. And you could run the same code everywhere. You just needed to adapt and adopt to the Linux API. So Linux became the open source API for cross-platform compatibility. Okay, hopefully no news to anybody here, but I just want to like, we'll set the baseline here. So for a decade, the smartphone vendors have been like the early computer vendors. So the applications you write for the phone had to be written with vendor supplied tool chains that varied across the platforms, vendor chosen languages that varied between the platforms. Again, talking about Objective-C and then later Swift, and over on the Android side, Java and Kotlin. So you had to learn two entirely different tool sets and understand both of those. And APIs, again, that also varied greatly, and here's the issue also from release to release. So you had to understand that, okay, your code is going to work with version 6 of iOS, but not version 7, or whatever, right? And the widgets that you saw on the screen for, on iOS versus Android were different. They were developed by the vendors. They were closed source. You couldn't control the gestures because the gestures were part of the API, and you were stuck. So most companies have figured out that to develop for both iOS and Android is you had to have essentially separate teams. You had the iOS team, you had the Android team, right? And they would share, you know, design things with each other, but that was it. And the problem, of course, is that they never quite looked or acted the same on both platforms because you had to build with the 
um, the, the the vendor provided widgets. You know, the, the way iOS did it, the way Android did it, differently different. Okay. Now, along comes Flutter, and the game changes. Flutter is an SDK. It's complete. It has framework, engine, widgets, and tools. All the way from top to bottom. You can deploy today with Flutter. It gives developers easy and a productive way to build and deploy beautiful apps. Uh, when I first wrote this slide deck back in February, it was only in alpha. So now it's in beta. It's not 1.0 yet, except that there are 700 applications on the Android store and 700 applications on the iOS store, the App Store, that already are written in Flutter. So, yes, it's early, but it is ready. Here's the odd thing, and when I had my Google guy stand with me on this presentation, the first time we did it, he couldn't talk about this. But if you read the documentation, Google is looking to replace Android with something. And the reason is that um, Oracle is trying to sue them about what they've done to make Android. And Google does not want to pay Oracle money for every copy of Android that ships. So they're looking for the replacement for Android. They have done this internally, it's called Fuchsia, but this also means, since Flutter is being developed for Fuchsia, that this is going to be the new Internet of Things application, it's going to be on the new phones, it's going to be on the new Google Home, it's going to be on the new um, display that you have on your, on your uh, uh, refrigerator. This is Fuchsia and Google is already ahead of the game on this. So, what we're talking about today is not just about phones, it's about everything. Okay, and also people have desktop apps, similar to what Electron does, so you can actually code in Flutter for desktop apps. Also, important thing to keep in mind is this Dart language is not just about iOS and Android and Fuchsia, it's also about, as I talked about last year, it's also about building web apps. Google is already deploying for their uh, um, Google Ads and Google, or, uh, sorry, uh, AdWords and, and AdSense, they're already deploying uh, uh, Dart for those. So the great thing is, you learn Dart once, and now you're deploying for five platforms, okay? So, for Flutter, what does Flutter do for you as a creator? It brings beautiful apps coming to life. For developers, it lowers the bar to entry to develop mobile apps. I don't have to learn Java, I don't have to learn Objective-C, I can learn this very simple language called Dart which I already know now, and I can deploy Flutter apps. It speeds up the development cycle, and we're gonna see this in a few minutes. We're gonna see a live demo, providing the demo gods are happy. Okay, that's always the question, right? Um, it reduces the cost and complexity of app across platforms, because you write once, you deploy twice, right? So it means you have a single mobile app team Instead of having to have two separate mobile app teams, one that knows Java, one that knows iOS stuff. For designers, of course, it also means that since, and we'll see this in a moment, since Flutter controls every pixel on the screen, you can have original design without compromises. You can paint stuff the way you need it. Hey, Scott. Hadn't, hadn't seen you yet this weekend, so there we go. Hi, Scott. All right. This is the reason I get to come here every year, by the way. So, yeah. He's nice. Um, it's also a productive prototyping tool. Again, because of the hot reload that I'll be showing you in a few minutes, you don't need a separate tool to say, let's lay this out and then transfer that over to my application. 
you can actually keep tweaking the application go no that should be red no that should be blue no that should be a fir like 20 pixels pixels left and you hit a button and a half a second later you see it on the screen you see it on your mobile device or you see it on um, your uh, simulator it's amazing nothing else is like this so what do you need to know what do you need to know okay flutter uses dart as a primary development language which is a modern strongly typed language you know to this audience it's going to be like you know strongly typed language let's skip past all those but the other thing that's interesting is is that no prior mobile experience is required when I started playing with this I have apps on my phone where's my phone oh, it's hiding somewhere okay I have apps on my phone that I wrote this is a game changer for me. I'm going to be writing, I have like five or six ideas already for apps. So I'm going to be writing a lot of apps. There we go. Even yours truly, talking about mobile development now. Yes. And one of the things my friend Wim, who uh, presented with me the first time I did this talk, is he said, look, even people with very little programming experience seem to be able to be productive very rapidly. And it's because Dart's not that complicated. It's a good language. And it, it abstracts exactly the right kinds of things you need to do mobile. And, and, you know, given that Google's been around the mobile spectrum for quite a while, that they would come up with this is not a surprise. So what can you build? It's optimized for 2D mobile applications. Not 3D yet. And also very capable of brand first designs, which means because you can control every pixel on the screen, you can exactly make it look like your brand. You don't have to try to work it into how the iOS and Android uh, widgets look to begin with. But you can also mimic stock platform look and feel. Out of the box, the easiest set of widgets are um, uh, material design. Some of you may be familiar with that. Material design is what Google has come up with to really make applications in mobile and on the web feel right. Okay. Flutter is a first class um, implementation of all the material design stuff. So, in fact, if you look down the checklist that they have, it's like only Flutter is the only one that has all the checkboxes checked off. So, these, the Flutter team is working very closely with the material design team to make sure that these applications work. Native services, <coughs> camera, geolocation, network, storage, and so on, third-party SDKs, and everything. You can get access to everything that you can do from a native app. This is a this is a native app, so of course you can access everything. So basically, it's an open source project, which is wonderful. I love open source, obviously, because I do my podcast on that. Again, originally developed, still heavily supported by Google, but there's been a huge amount of uh, community contributions. So it, this is not... If Google decided tomorrow, oh, we hate Flutter, there's going to be a huge community around this already. So you don't have to worry about this being abandoned by somebody. They're building business critical apps for both iOS and Android with Flutter. So they're eating their own dog food on this. There are literally hundreds of people inside Google who are working on Flutter and working on these apps. Uh, they have an internal mobile sales tool, they have a store manager, they have a bunch of other internal projects. And again, as I said earlier, hundreds of projects already deployed in both stores. How many people here have heard of the musical Hamilton? Hamilton, right? Many of you? The app for that was done in three months from concept to deploy using Flutter. They chose that. The agency that was 
working with the company that was producing Hamilton, chose that because they said, we need to do both platforms, we need it to look the same on both platforms, and they chose Flutter. Flutter is not quite 1.0. So that's my only disclaimer for today. It's like, eh, a few things might change. Um, but probably not a lot. Probably just if they got some API wrong or something somewhere. Uh, Dart 2, which it depended on, was just released a few weeks ago. So that's that was one of the steps. And now Dart 2 is out there. And again, the API is pretty stable. Still might change. Mostly in the uh, uh, internationalization and uh, um, yeah, so it might change. The thing is, it is used already extensively inside Google. There are some key features, accessibility, that's the one I was thinking of. Not quite ready for broad deployment. They're still working on some of those. Again, follow a GitHub issue if something's missing, or you can submit a pull request. Uh, Wim, my friend, called this the uh, the uh, the NASCAR page where you just put a bunch of logos up there. Great. So these guys all using Flutter today. Uh, so that's that. That's all I can say about that. Okay. So why is Flutter different? Why am I excited about this? So let's look at the classic applications. Over there in the left in the green, you wrote your native code, you had to write it in Objective-C or Java, depending on where you were. You would cross that boundary over to the OEM widget, so it means you would have to call, uh, you know, put up a dialog box or uh, draw this widget here on the screen. So everything on the right-hand side is provided by the, the, uh, the, the vendor, right? So the problem, of course, was that that green box is written twice. It's written once for iOS, once for Android, in an entirely different language. So people started saying, wait a second, we can fix this. So they said, let's write your application in JavaScript. Okay, so yeah, that's cool. People like JavaScript. People can write in JavaScript, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be up here and just I got the podium, so JavaScript sucks. Okay. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. JavaScript sucks. All right. I sat on a panel in nineteen ninety nine with uh Ram, the guy who created JavaScript, and the first thing he said once he got the mic was I'm so sorry for optional semicolons. <laughs> I'm so sorry for optional semicolons. And I thought, that's the best way you could have opened this panel. All right, so here's the thing, though. So there were, there are still a number of ways that you can write cross-platform applications for iOS and Android with your code entirely in JavaScript, but it has to have this bridge that crosses over to things like Bluetooth, camera and everything else, right? But then you had to then code down to actually providing a web view. Now, web's cool. I like the web. I've done a lot of coding for the web for years. But trying to get that exact thing that you want on the web is not only somewhat difficult, but it's also expensive. Because we keep adding layers on top of layers, on top of CSS, on top of this, on top of that. And that is the expense that actually led the people at Google to create Flutter. The team that was building web views for mobile said, what can we do if we take out most of this stuff? And that's where Flutter came from. Anyway, so there's this web view, and then again, you've got the canvas over there, you've got the events over there. So like somebody presses on an icon, it's got to ripple all the way back up to your JavaScript, and then your JavaScript takes actions. So this was a good solution for a while. And then smarter people came along, and they said, 
oh, let's talk directly to OEM widgets. But now that requires even a bigger bridge that I could sell you. <laughs> a bigger bridge, which in fact talks about, again, JavaScript now has to go across two bridges, one to talk to the services that are coming in, and one that talks to the OEM widgets. And by OEM widgets, I mean like the native date picker, the native pop-up box, things like that, right? Okay, but you notice now that bridge is in two places. This would be the solution for something like uh, Xamarin or um, React Native. That's where this fits. Okay, let's go one step further for Flutter, and you'll see why it's so much cooler. Flutter is all native code in Dart, a much better language than JavaScript. There are channels that talk to the services. The widgets, the things that draw pixel by pixel, are all also written in Dart. All that's down on the platform side, as you see, is a canvas. It's actually the canvas that came from Chrome called Skia. So it's drawing pixel by pixel all the way down. Much faster. 120 frames a second is trivial. This is not possible in the previous sessions. Scrolling, in fact, is done completely by Dart. There's no low-level code for that. It's all Dart that's playing out your scrolling. Awesome stuff. And if you don't like the way it scrolls, you can redesign that because, again, that's all Dart. So let me do a few more pages here. I'm going to do a live demo, crossing fingers. Okay, so again, Flutter doesn't use the native web view. It doesn't use the native OEM widgets. Every pixel is yours. So again, that means no penalty crossing across the inputs, the app code, the rendering engine. Again, Flutter uses Skia from Chrome to render its own widgets. The widgets are all in Dart, which is great because in my, in my IDE, I can say, wait a second, how is this dialog box actually being drawn? I push a button, I go to the source code, because it's all Dart. And I can go, oh, I'd like that, but I really just want to have it do, do a blue boundary around the whole thing. I subclass that, and I'm done. So in other words, every widget you see you can fix. There's a thin layer of C++, talking native APIs, but again, Dart code is handling all the compositing, layers, gestures, animation, frameworks, every well, and again, inspectable, patchable, extendable. Cross-platform look is and feel is easily provided, but we can also query the framework to say, am I on iOS, am I on Android, Am I on a Mac? Am I on Windows? And then change it based on that. Out of the box, it's mostly material design, but there are uh, iOS native uh, look and feel widgets. They're called Cupertino because iOS was tough to type, apparently. <laughs> so they're all called Cupertino, which is fun. All right. So, uh, let me try the live demo at this point. Okay, hold on a second. We're going to hide this. We're going to cancel this. Why is that coming up? Uh, and that's, those are penguins. It's fine. Uh, it's, like, it's like Linux. It's like Linux. Hold on. It's like Linux. Hold on. Uh, why is this not coming up? Hold on. So, I want to do this and this and I want to oh I, want, I need to turn on mirroring because then you can see us okay mirror displays DSPLA lights there we go and turn on arrangement and mirror displays so you should be seeing what I'm seeing now and why did it get so much bigger which just sucks okay um how do I get rid of this? All this stuff. Let me get rid of all this stuff. 
Here we go. There's that. There's this. Uh, not that. I don't want that. I want BSC. All right. But why is that? Hold on. Why is that so much the wrong resolution? This is HDMI, right? So it should be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, optimize for that. Built-in rent display. Wait. Arrangement color. Scaled. Scaled, I think is what I want. 1080p. There we go. Ah, that'll be better. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. That's closer. That's closer. I'll do that. That'll be fine. I'm just going to get out of this. Um, I'm going to try to make the text big enough so you guys can all see it. So give me a second here. While I'm still hiding this, and I'm going to put this up here, and I'm going to put this up, up. This over here. I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger. Hold on. That's why the demo gods have to smile because that's how this works. Okay. That's going to be too small for you to read. Just play along with me. Okay. So over here I have an iOS simulator. Okay. So this is an iPhone 8 Plus, which is actually the one I have in my pocket over here. But this is an iPhone 8 simulator. Okay. And. I'm in Visual Studio Code, which, by the way, rocks. It's amazing Microsoft released something <laughs> that is open source that works really cool. Okay, because it's gotten me away from actually using Emacs for everything. Okay, so so here here's what we're looking at here. Um, why is it only the top half of the screen? That's kind of weird. Oh, well, that's because it's always that way. Okay, so this is a Flutter app. And it has only uh, 63 lines of code. So it's not very long at all, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to push a button, F5, F5. And in a moment, somewhere here, I hope, did F5 actually work? Or do I need to do this? Debug. Did it actually work? Uh, Debug window. Oh, that's simulator. I want to go to this, which is code debug. Start debugging. There we go. I'll just do that. F5 apparently didn't work. Okay, so here we go. So, the what you're now waiting for is the typical reload cycle for most developers on mobile, which is they make a change, and about 28 seconds later, the code finally fires up, as you're seeing now, the code finally fires up on the simulator. That's 28 seconds or so, right? This is a really stupid app. All it does is you press this FAB, it's a plus over here on the right hand side, and it goes, oh, right? Just counts. That's boring. We're going to fix that. Okay? so. First off, you know, I hate blue. Let's make this green. Oh, let's make it let's make it orange. Okay, so in my code, I'm changing now the value from blue to orange. Now watch, here's the magic. I hit save. Changed. Nice. Hot reload. So you don't have to wait that 28 seconds once you make a change. Already game changer, right? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Right. But let's let's fix some more stuff with this. So I don't like Flutter demo homepage. Let's actually change that to Dragon Con. Because that's where we are. Dragon Con demo. Again, watch, save, done. You can be twiddling your application over and over again and see it immediately. You don't need a separate app builder. This is live, right? And I know it's tiny on screen. I'm so sorry. Tiny on screen. Okay, so one of the things I want to do is I want to have both a plus and a minus. Oh, wait, no. First, I want to fix that text. That text is really tiny. So let's do this. I'm going to go here and get rid of that text. And I'm going to say, clicked, right here. Okay. So I'm editing the text. I hit save. 
Watch, watch the screen. Save. Done. So I even got rid of a widget. And now this comes up like this, right? Isn't that awesome? That's just awesome. Okay. So now I want to do a, a, a minus button, both a plus button and a minus button. So all I have to do here is I'm going to copy. Oh, first I have to make it a column. Uh, new access column. Da, ba, ba, ba. Why does that say column already? That's weird. Didn't used to say that. <laughs> Somebody added that. That's great. Um, uh, the, the demo used to not have a column here. So I'm going to take a... Oh, wait. Oh, it actually does. Okay. So I'm going to take this floating action button, and I'm going to use one of the refactors that they have, which is called uh, here. We're going to say... No, I extract nothing. Uh, this is why I should have rehearsed better today. <laughs> Uh, no, it's here. It's, this, it's right here. It's right here. Floating action button needs to be column. There we go. So we wanted to uh, refactor, uh, add, wrap with column. There we go. That's where I want to do it. Okay. So in the IDE, I'm saying where that little button is in the lower hand corner, I want to make it actually a column. I hit save. Oh, but wait, the button went way up here. Why the hell did it go way up here? It's because column takes an argument called. Uh, main axis alignment, and so I will add that main axis alignment, main axis alignment, and and then save. Now it's done back to the bottom again because the problem is I made a column, but by default the column goes up rather than down. So there we go. Now the plus is back there. So now what I want to do is take this floating action button. I'm going to copy it. So just drop it right in here. Save it again. I think. Well, it didn't work. Uh, it hates me today. It hates me today. Playing some in there. What? Sorry? Oh, oh, oh. It, right, it's not in column. I need it. I need it. Yeah. You're right. You're right. But no, it needs to be inside column. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Right. I don't even mean excellent alignment twice. That's the problem. Thank you. My God. How do people here already know this stuff? Uh, so, oh, no. I didn't want to do that, though. I want to do this and out the, and all this. This is gone. No. Undo, undo, undo. <laughs> right. I just, want, I just want this children. I just want this new floating action button twice. Yes. Right, right, no, not that. There we go, right there, copy, paste, right? Yeah, there we go, two plus buttons. But I don't want a plus button, I want a, uh, I want a minus button. So let's make this remove. It's going to make this a minus, except it's still calling the old code, which is going to add plus. So either of these are going to be incrementing, right? That's no fun. I want to make this minus. So we're going to go up here to my minus code right here. I'm going to create decrement counter. And I've learned, oh, I've changed the three letters and from increment to decrement. <laughs> I used to type the whole thing. Okay, but not plus plus. We're going to make it minus minus, right? Okay, good so far, right? So we've created a new symbol we haven't actually used yet, but we're going to just change this. Deck. And we're going to just change that to deck. For, for the hell, for the hell of it, right, deck. Okay, now notice, minus and plus, right? So here I am, I'm designing my app live, right? Minus, 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 look at that. Okay, oh, no, you know, I didn't want these to be column, let's do a row. That's so we're gonna change this to row. Now they're in a row, okay? And you know, I don't like that they're orange. It should be like green and red, right? So let's fix that. So we're gonna go down here and uh, we're gonna add a floating action button color. I think it is colors, background color. IDE is helping me here. It's telling me what I should be doing. Background color, colors, red. 
and then also uh, over here, red, right here, red, yes. Then over here, uh, we're going to do background color, colors, green. Save. Wonderful. This is how easy it is to use Flutter. You just keep working your app until it's the right thing you want, right? Plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. Now, even though I've changed the code 20 times since the beginning of the demo, notice how the number stayed there. So you can be way down, drilled into your app, and then go, oh, that should have been blue instead of green, or that should have been at the top instead of the bottom. And it remembers all the state above that while you're still developing. This is a game changer. This, there's nothing like this. This is why everybody here can be doing mobile soon. All right, let me go back to my presentation because I only have 20 minutes, or maybe even less than that. We'll see. Okay, how do we do this? Uh, back to not being mirrored. Uh, so I need to go to displays. And I will talk quickly, which I always do anyway. I will talk quickly. Where's arrangement is here. This goes off. And back to that. And then play. All right. So let's talk about it a bit more. Uh, yeah, technology. So again, Dart and Flutter, everything in blue, you can't touch. That's all C++. You're not going to touch that. But everything above that, is all dart. You can see the source code. It, in, in my IDE, I could have drilled down and seen exactly what a floating action button did, right? Heavily optimized 2D rendering, reactive style framework, rich set of widgets for Android and iOS, although primarily they're all favoring the material design stuff. What's funny is you can actually ship material design before the Android operating systems that had material design. Because again, you're shipping pixel for pixel. So you can go all the way down. Um, APIs for unit and integration testing, uh, APIs to connect to the system and third party SDKs, headless test runner for running tests on Windows, Linux, and Mac, command line tools for creating, building, testing, compiling. There's this great thing that I talked about last year about Pub which is basically a place where you can find other people's uh, uh, widgets and things like that. Very awesome. You can run with IntelliJ IDE, IDA, or I was doing VS Code a moment ago. Very integrated development experience. Um, you can also get use Atom and Emacs and Sublime and Vim and stuff like that if you're like a boring lay person. All right. Uh, VS Code actually started as a third party plugin, but the guys at Google recognized that the guy who was doing this in, in, in Germany was doing such a great job. They actually hired him for a year. So that, that plugin I was using to do what I was just demonstrating was in fact written by him. Um, unfortunately, Apple requires that if you're going to develop for iOS, you have to have a Mac. There's no way around that. I have a Mac. I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right. Um, and then uh, Android development, of course, requires Android Studio, which runs on mobile platforms. And the nice thing is, I didn't have to invoke Xcode to be able to put it on my display. The uh, IDE knows how to do that. So all I have to do is push buttons. It's very nice that way. So the framework was inspired by React and React Native in that every widget that gets drawn knows what values it needed to create itself. And then when any of those values change, the widget redraws itself. So that's not anything you have to write. It's just simple. It's just You just simply say, this widget is built of these values and somehow that all tracks. Magical. All right. Uh, designed to be layered and customizable and optional. You can use everything that Google provides. You can use a completely different framework at any level, which is really cool. And you can create widgets from scratch. 
The widget layout is single pass and fast enough to even be res uh, uh, responsive during scrolling. In other words, scrolling's tough because it's like, I don't want to draw the widgets that are above me or below me, so how do I control that? You don't have to think about that. It figures it out. It knows where the scroll points are. It only draws the widgets that are in frame right now. Very, very cool. Okay, APIs, writing unit integration tests. Google actually uses this API to test the kit that it sends you. So, C++ code compiled with Android's NDK. iOS is compiled with LLVM. The Dart code, and here's the important part. The Dart code, when you deploy, is compiled using tree-shaking logic and only delivers the parts of the libraries you need. And it's compiled directly to ARM code. In other words, you're writing a native application. You're not going through a VM. You're writing a native application by using Dart. There's a jitter for fast reload during the deployment, but again, no VM is involved by the time you deploy. Also, the, again, the OEM widgets not used. You're controlling pixel for pixel. Higher performance, coded in open source. That means you can change it, you can subclass it, you can understand it. All really cool. Consistent behavior in all phones, all versions. You don't need these shims for older operating systems as you might have to do with traditional things. And again, you can ship material design apps to phones even before material actually became a thing, which is pretty amazing. Why Dart? Because they chose it. They wanted a, a JIT-based fast development cycle for things like Hot Reload, as, as I was demonstrating a few minutes ago. But they also wanted an AOT compiler, ahead of time compiler, so they could emit efficient ARM code for fast startup, reliable speed. So the Flutter team actually has also influenced Dart development. They helped create the AOT compiler, which has actually had implications also on server-side stuff, which is great. And they also figured out how to optimize the VM for latency rather than throughput, which means that your, uh, they call it jank time, when it was like it's how fast do you scroll, things like that. Those are all worked out. They also helped influence what's now become Dart 2.0, which is strong mode, which is a very sound type system. The compiler now understands when you write like a list of things on the right hand side and you say var a equals that, it now understands if those are all integers, it is a list of integers. It deduces that and types it that way. Very cool. We saw this, sub-second reload times on a device or an emulator. The app state is retained. You saw the number didn't change, even though I was updating colors and locations of things. The number didn't change. That's the important part there. Quick iteration, even on a screen nested deeply in your app. And you can add new classes, new methods, new fields. There's a few things you can't do a hot reload global variable initializers, like for example, the fact that that number started out as zero can't be reloaded. I can't set that to 100 in my code. But I press one more keystroke and I do a hot restart. One and a half seconds. Oh, only another second. <laughs> oh, too bad, right. So when you have these kinds of things, you have to actually do a hot restart which is not bad, not bad at all. So you need uh, to, to deploy, only deploying right now on uh, Android Jelly Bean, iOS 8. Uh, by the way, this will change actually soon. Oh, did I say that out loud? Because I'm not supposed to be able to tell you that I know this. Sorry, erase that, can we erase the tape? Erase the tape, sorry. Anyway, but soon, <laughs> it'll be even earlier. Okay, um, live devices iOS, Android, oh, we're about wrapped up, right? Am I running out of time? 
15 minutes, I can talk slower. I like talking fast though. So Google, okay, Google tests on a variety of phones, but they don't test on tablets. People have deployed this stuff on tablets, but Google officially has no tablet support. Okay, that's not what they want to do. And taking back a step, this project, like Dart in general, and is like they're building it for them. Okay, so they will keep supporting everything that's important to them. But the, they're not going to tell you don't use it here. But if you start whining about why aren't you doing this? Remember, this is Google, you know, feeding themselves, right? So that's the way this works. The project is amazing regardless of that, okay? Um, doesn't test on tablets. Um, it's also possible, again, they're working on this, the documentation is getting better, to embed a Flutter view into an existing iOS or Android device, and Android program. Um, it's getting better. So in other words, you could have like, you know, five screens of what you wrote using traditional technology, and then here's a Flutter screen. So that's cool. Better documentation coming, it's getting better. Um, and again, desktop and web apps are not on the roadmap for Flutter. Flutter's mostly about building really beautiful iOS and Android apps. And that's it, that's, and Fuchsia, which we don't know about. But there are third parties that have desktop apps already, so that's cool. So to be able to connect to some of the standard APIs, you can talk to those APIs. And they're not intended to be like a lowest common denominator. They, you know, they talk natively to those apps, the APIs. Um, and again, some services and APIs, not supported by Google, but third party also available. Um, so you basically connect to that with a, uh, they call it the async message passing system streams and stuff. Um, again, the widgets are easy by design. They're based on composition. Widgets are always constructed from smaller widgets. So for example, a raised button is basically a material button in a gesture detector. So the material gives a look, the gesture detector gives the interaction, and the, what's great is composition gives you the maximum control over visual interaction design and a great amount of reuse. And many material widgets have been decomposed their pieces and allows for increased mix and match strategies. You can talk to the platform, integration with Java and Kotlin on Android, integration with Objective-C and Swift on iOS, very flexible message passing style. And you can construct the specific parts of the two platform code in such a way that you have the same API at the top level. So in other words, you're always calling, you know, foobar, whatever, right? But it does something different on iOS and Android. You can do concurrency. You can run in parallel. There's no shared memory parallelism, no locks required. You can even run code on Android in the background. iOS, for some reason, they can't do that yet. I don't know quite what the reasoning is there. As we saw a moment ago when I was doing my demo, I wasn't changing an XML file to change layout. Thank God. It's all code. It's all Dart code. Which means I could have refactored that out as a separate widget. Or I could have refactored that out as a method on my main class. I'm not jumping to an entirely different language to do layout. Some of you are already going, praise God. Yes, exactly. Much more flexible. And the code first method also works better for hot reload because the 
framework completely understands what you just changed about laying those out as a row instead of a column so it can know exactly the parts of the screen that need to be redrawn whereas if you change like some XML file over somewhere it'd have to like analyze that again and figure out what to do and you can reuse it it's just code and you can create a custom language people have done this to actually build widgets on the fly at compile time so what an amazing technology almost done here we go so again github has an open issue tracker stack overflow for how to type questions a lot of activity on stack overflow for this so much i'm almost having trouble keeping up with it it's a mailing list it's a very active gitter channel so my gitter shows me like when it's 100 plus messages and I go away for an hour and I come back and it's 100 plus. There's, there's, like, there's like no chance to keep up with that. Um, and it's awesome the Google people are actually there. It's totally open source, very relaxed language, or license, I mean. Support for uh, showing the license directly in apps via widgets. But again, the bulk of the work is being done by Google for their own internal applications. However, we can all benefit from their work. So, reactive use, no JavaScript bridge. Fast, smooth, and predictable, compiles to ARM code, runs native. You have full control over every pixel. Beautiful widgets, material design, first class citizen of material design. Great developer tools, hot reload, more performance, more compatibility, more fun. <laughs> And by the way, you can develop for iOS and Android from one code base, which is not the most important part of this story. I, I think even if you were just developing for Android or just developing for iOS, hot reload should be the thing that goes, oh my god. Really. It's revolutionary. For their info, there's a great blog, uh, there's some videos and crap, whatever. So I'll be in here. Try it out today. And I'll take questions now. So, so this, this wait, 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 we have a mic. We have a mic. Otherwise, it doesn't go on the uh, recording. Yeah, oh, that's sort of working. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So on the screen now, we are seeing where we would go for the like accessible tutorials for beginners. Yeah. Are okay. there others that you would recommend? The most important tutorial is actually on the Flutter.io website. So they have a great tutorial there. And they actually have like four or five series of tutorials there on Flutter.io. So that's, all your, that's really only one you all need. The other thing would be to Google me, Randall Schwartz, Randall Schwartz, Dart, Flutter, and I'm doing a bunch of presentations there, including today's. Questions? Just talk on the bottom top. Uh, yeah. Okay. I was curious if you've looked into how this compares to the PhoneGap Cordova API. Yeah, again, almost all the other frameworks talk through a JavaScript bridge. So, and so, so they have to deal with going across either one way or two ways across that. So that one and does. Flutter support, doesn't. That one does support compiling at least parts of it to native. Well, you're still code. Compile it, you're compiling it, but it still has to talk through a bridge to the, the native uh, the, the native frameworks. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is Flutter's the only thing right now that does like really just talking pixel for pixel down to the the bottom. Some of those are also talking to I or, uh, 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 OEM widgets. So that's part of the problem too. Okay, more? Anybody? Questions? Oh, in the back. In the back. And as he's about to ask his question, has this been useful for anybody here? People like what I just talked about? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, question. Hey, uh, I was just curious to know. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, is there any uh, integration with AR Core Kit? Uh, is there a roadmap for that? Um, anything that isn't already deployed by the Google team is uh, you can get to it from the platform channels. 
So they are supporting the fact that you can talk to platform channels. So in other words, you can write something in Kotlin or write something in uh, uh, Swift to talk to stuff like that. I don't know if there's anything in the current pub that allows that yet. But it's not part of their core. It's not part of what Google's trying to do with Flutter. But that doesn't mean it can't be accessed. Everything can be accessed ultimately with Flutter. It's a matter of talking, creating the right shim that you want to talk to. Good question. Up here? All right, I was wondering, uh, what's the current support for a lot of the hardware-specific um, functionalities like Bluetooth, uh, screen rotation, notifications, uh, that kind of stuff? Most of that, okay, he's asking about the uh, specific support for things that you would need in an app. Uh, almost all that is covered already. So Flutter does have connections to Bluetooth, to notifications, all that stuff. If anything, again, is missing, it's just a matter of writing your right platform channel, and it may already be in pub, or it may already, it might be something you might have to write. We've got like one minute, I think, right? Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, he's here, right here in front again. And, no. Yeah, sorry. You mentioned uh, there was a Dart VM, uh, but you said it's not needed for app operation. I was wondering if you could talk about what that's used for. Okay, so he's asking about the Dart VM. So how this works is when you are in debugging mode, the VM is completely transported to the, uh, to the, the device or the simulator. And that's what allows hot reload to happen. But there's a different mode that you're in that does AOT compiling. And at that point, there's no VM. It's really just ARM code talking only to a very thin library, and that's it. There's no VM. In fact, that's actually why Dart will run faster, Flutter will run faster than running stuff in Java, the Java VM, because it is completely ARM code at that point. It is completely compiled, yes. All right, I think I'm done. Thank you, everybody. Have, have a great rest of the con. Have a great rest of the con.